Hi, this is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a wavy pattern in Photoshop. First off, let's go ahead and create a new file. I'm going to use the dimensions of 1200 pixels by 1200 pixels, resolution set to 300 pixels per inch, color mode is RGB color mode, and then background content set to transparent. I'm going to go ahead and click on create. I to start off with, I'm going to go ahead and add a guide layout. So I'm going to go to view, guides, new guide layout. For this, I'm going to do eight columns and eight rows, and then just clicking on OK. I like to start with guides just to help um, plan out my patterns. So I'm going to use the pen tool. So I'm going to right click here. You can see the pen tool, the keyboard shortcut is P. And then just starting on this side, I'm going to click and I am going to just drag out my line and that will help create a curve. Coming to this point here, we'll do the same thing. We'll go ahead and drag out the line. And then finally, clicking here, we'll drag it out to hit that line as well. So we have a nice kind of bell-shaped curve here. Uh, currently, the fill uh, we have a fill, so I'm going to turn off the fill. And then I'm going to change my stroke to black. And then I'm going to do uh, 40 pixels for my stroke width. So we have this nice curve here. Uh, with this shape, I'm just going to convert it to a smart object before we duplicate it. That way, if I want to uh, change my stroke width uh, down the road, I can do that. So I'm going to go ahead to convert to smart object. Just hitting the V key to get my move tool, I'm going to uh, center my object. Uh, to center it, I'm going to hit the M for the marquee tool, and then I'll go Command or Control A to select everything, and then we'll hit our V tool to access our move tool again, which basically just brings up these uh, controls here where you can align it uh, both vertically and horizontally to hit our center point. And then you can just deselect here Command or Control D. Um, I do want to point out that in my Photoshop actions for pattern design, I do have an action that makes it quicker to do that. So if, say we're off center again, you just click to center that object and we'll do it automatically. In the description below, I will leave a link to where um, you can purchase these actions. They're definitely helpful when it comes to designing in Photoshop. Next, we'll go ahead and duplicate this layer, Commander Control J, and then I'm going to use the free transform tool, Commander Control T which lets me uh, position this. So I'm, we're going to leave X at 600. We'll go Y to 0, which puts us here at the top, clicking on OK. And then we are going to add it to the bottom here as well. Uh, repeating that step, you would just want to duplicate it and then move it to the bottom. Um, I have an action for that. So in this case, I'm going to go down at 1,200, which is the size of my canvas, and it will automatically um, duplicate it and bring it to the bottom. So now we have a repeatable pattern that we can save here in Photoshop. So I'm going to go to edit, uh, define pattern. If you want to save your pattern, uh, you can also do it from the patterns panel here by clicking on this plus icon, give your pattern name, clicking on okay. And then we see our newly created pattern here. Let's go ahead and create a new document uh, to test out our pattern. So I'm going to go file new. For this, I'm going to use the dimensions of digital scrapbook paper, which is 3,600 pixels by 3,600 pixels, resolution set to 300 pixels per inch. We'll go ahead and create that document. And then we will test out our pattern. I do have an action here called pattern test, which just brings up a pattern fill layer and two color fill adjustment layers to access these to create for yourself. You can do it here from the layers panel just to select your pattern layers and your solid color layers there. So we'll click on that pattern fill layer and select our newly created pattern and we can see our wave effect. If we jump back over here, I say you want it thicker, we can jump back into our um, smart object here and I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of those guides because we don't need it in this view here. And so let's say we want to make it thicker. So if I click on the shape tool, we'll bring back this shape tool so we can get our um, pixel length here. So say we want to bring it up to something thicker. So 100, 
100 pixels and what you'll notice is that our canvas is too small. In this case you can easily um, adjust your canvas size. We'll go image canvas size, uh, we'll leave the width but say we bring up our height to 600. Um, you can easily do that with your smart objects, it doesn't affect it in the, um, oh, the other document but just know that we can adjust it here. So let's go ahead and see that command or control S to save it and then to close this out command or control W and we see we have a thicker stroke width here and then we can just uh, save that again see how it looks in our document and we have a thicker uh, stroke there uh, jumping back over into our original document here I'm going to click back into um, our smart object I'm going to bring it back to our uh, 40 pixels here so we'll save that command or control S to save it and then we'll jump back in to our document here. So we have our smaller um, stroke width here. So, so let's go ahead and duplicate this layer, Command or Control J. I'm going to bring it to the top and then we'll just turn off these other layers here. So I'm going to um, duplicate it again and then I want to uh, flip it vertically. So to do that you can go to Edit, uh, tr Transform, Flip Vertical, I do have an action for that which makes it quick there. So now we have this um, overlapping effects of our pattern. Uh, we can turn this into a pattern as well. So let's just take our marquee tool and then just draw a rectangle around this inside area. And then when you have something selected with the marquee tool, you can click to define it as a pattern and it will define that area. So let's see how that looks here. Uh, so we have another style pattern here. Let's go ahead and deselect that command or control D. Uh, the next thing I want to try with this pattern is creating kind of a um, where one goes over the other effect and, and I'll show you what I mean here. So let's go ahead and select um, the one that curves up here. So I'm going to go just move tool here um, in the layers panel just hovering over that icon just go command click and that will select those uh, pixels there and then we are going to go to select modify and expand and then I'm going to expand it by 20 pixels here and clicking on OK you'll see that those uh, selected pixels expand out and so we are now going to click on this other layer here and then I am going to select this layer mask um, and see what I noticed is it didn't exactly select the areas I want. So I'm going to undo that command or control Z. In this case I actually need to select the inverse. So I'm going to go select inverse and then we're still in that layer and then we are going to uh, hit that um, create a mask effect here. Uh, so for this I want one to look like it goes over and one to look like it goes under. So we're still on our mask here. I'm going to access my brush tool and then um, currently I have white set to the foreground. So if we draw on white it will bring back um, those pixels there uh, versus if you switch this and you had black it would take away pixels. Um, we can undo it there. So right now we have the effect we want over here but we want to do the same thing um, but with the other one. So we're on this layer of this curve that goes down. We're going to command click on that area so we can select those pixels. I'm going to go to select, modify, and expand. And again we're going to expand by 20 pixels here. Uh, this time we want to do it to this layer here so we are going to do our select our inverse and then we'll create that layer mask here and so now we're seeing uh, that it took away some of the areas here so we want to uh, draw on it again with our white so we'll bring we'll bring back that area here from our layer mask and so now we have that kind of effect where it looks like it goes over and then under the other um, line for that kind of intertwine effect here. So we have our two layers here. Let's go ahead and select both of them and then we are going to convert this to Smart Object. So right click Convert to Smart Object. Uh, let's go ahead and duplicate that layer, Command or Control J. Um, I'll just get back to my Move Tool V on the keyboard here and then we can 
um, bring it out. And then you can uh, play with how you position it here. Let's try there. So with this top one selected, um, let's go ahead and clear our guides. So view, guides, clear guides. We have this top one selected. I'm gonna create a new glide to um, align to the top there. We'll select this bottom one, we'll pull out a guide, and that will just help us define our next pattern. So we'll draw that out here, okay? And then we'll hit that plus icon to save our new pattern. And then let's go ahead and see how that looks over here. And it gives you this fun visual effect uh, with that kind of interweaving um, effect that you can create. Uh, with these color adjustment layers, you can always uh, change up the color. Uh, say we try coral type color, change it out. Um, let's do something a little bit darker to give it a better contrast on the screen here. And you just kind of play with the colors um, of what you want to use. So you can just play with the colors until you find a combination that you like. And then to export this as digital scrapbook paper, we are going to go to File, Export, Export As. Here under File Settings, I'm going to change it to JPEG. Uh, for the quality, um, you generally want a high quality, uh, but just note that the higher the quality um, does create a larger file size. And then just scrolling down, I like to have embed color profile selected here and then just click to export your pattern. Thank you for watching this video on how to create this fun pattern in Photoshop. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. This is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. See you next time.